guys. Welcome to the practical part of this tutorial. Our goal is to create a small Pokemon game. If you are interested, subscribe to this channel. And if you want to see some other Python videos, also subscribe to this channel as I will go, go on continue to publish videos with Python. So by creating our little Pokemon game, we try to design our project according to various OOP principles. So first we ask ourselves uh, some questions. How should our project be structured? How should the architecture look like? Folder structure and class names play a crucial role on the way to becoming a good coder. I especially recommend books of uh, clean code, like this one from Uncle Bob aka Robert Martin and Clean Architecture from the same author as these books describe in a very good way how to create your software architecture and how to create clean code. So if you have the money just buy these books they are really awesome and they helped me a lot on my path to become a good software developer in a good and big company. So in order to create our um, our project we want to define our data models. So let's do this by creating a new folder and we call these data models. Furthermore, we should also take care of the PEP08 guidelines, which are very important, especially for Python developers. And you have them here on this website, pep8.org, and you can read a lot of stuff, how to write good Python code, and how Python names or methods should be named. We will try to, to keep this, although I cannot promise you that we will keep it every time and uh, every time straight according to the PEP I guidelines. So, so please forgive me if I don't or write it in the comments and give me some suggestions how I can do this better. So we, will, uh, we have now our data model folder and in this data model folder we will create, like the name says, our data model. So what are data models? This is a good question. So a data model is an abstract model that organizes elements of data and standardizes how they relate to one another and to the properties of real world entities. So what, what this means for our, uh, for our project, we need to uh, answer some questions. So which data types do we need? What are the concrete characteristics? In our case, concrete uh, embossings would be special Pokemon. Uh, for the sake of, of simplicity, we will focus on three Pokemon and their further developments. So um, I will show you now a list here. I hope you can see it. I will make it a little bit larger. So you have this Pokemon. I think if you look at the pictures, most of you will, will know them. Um, because uh, don't worry, I'm sure every, every one of you will recognize this Pokemon because I just assume that most of you like me are somehow like 90 kiddies and, and they all watch this and they, we, we, we all gathered the Pokemon cards. So um, these are the German names. Um, and also, but we will use the English names because this tutorial is also in English and I want to, 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 to present it to an international community. So we, we will use like Bulbasaur and its developments, which are Ivysaur and Venusaur. Uh, furthermore, we will use Charmander and its two developments, uh, Charmeleon and Charizard. And also we will use Squirtle, Wartortle and Blastoise. If I mispronounce one of the names, please forgive me. I only know the German names. And just by the way, I, I think in my opinion, Glumanda sounds a little bit sweeter than Tremander. But I do not want to start a fight here. So let's keep the English names and we will create our data models now. But before we do that, we also ask ourselves the following questions. What do these Pokemon have in common? Can we bundle some characteristics together? so that we can avoid writing redundant code. Because remember, as a good software developer, you always want to, to, to avoid writing double code. So do, for example, Bulbasaur and Germander have some things in common, so we don't have to define these characteristics in both classes. And as we will see, this uh, answer to these questions leads us to a cornerstone of object-oriented programming. And this is called inheritance. Since Bulbasaur, Charmander and Squirtle are all Pokemons, you can inherit from a general Pokemon class. So for example, every one of them has a name. 
So we don't need to define a name in the class Bulbasaur, in the class Charmander, or in the class Squirtle. We can define the name in the class Pokemon and make Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle inherit. So um, furthermore, they, 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 they differ in their type. So we have here three types. We have one Aqua type, one Grass type, and one Fire type. So we, this, this helps us a lot because we can build a, a certain structure. And you can see this structure here. This um, browser-based uh, tool is called draw.io. It's really nice to, to create very fast um, some UML diagrams. So um, this is our main class. This is Pokemon. And these arrows are showing which class is inheriting from the other one. So we see that we have a Pokemon and we have three types. So we have Aqua, we have Grass and we have Fire. And we know that every Pokemon, it doesn't matter whether it's an Aqua Pokemon like Squirtle, whether it's a Bulbasaur a Grass Pokemon or whether it's a Fire Pokemon like Charmander, they all are Pokemon. So they can inherit from one class. But of course we need to differentiate them also. So we can define that Squirtle is an Aqua Pokemon. So Squirtle will not inherit directly from Pokemon. And furthermore, also Bulbasaur will not directly inherit from Pokemon. Charmander too. But they will inherit from Aqua, from Grass and from Fire. So we need to find a way later in the code how to avoid this. So I do not want that Squirtle inherits directly from Pokemon. Because this is losing of information. We want that it's just allowed to inherit from Aqua and not from, from, from Pokemon directly. The only Pokemon, uh, the only classes that should uh, inherit Pokemon are type classes. And I know that there are in real life more type classes, not just Aqua, Grass and Fire, but there's also, I, I think it's Psycho and maybe in the new Pokemon versions there are even more classes. But we will just focus uh, on these three main classes to uh, for the sake of simplicity. So, we this is like the type we want to, to implement now. And yeah, let's go to work. So, we are here again at the code. And let's create our classes. So in the data model, we have a Pokemon class like discussed now. We further have Aqua Pokemon. And I will just copy the, the Pokemon keyword because we will need it more often. We have a Fire Pokemon and we have a Grass Pokemon. And I added now here the little window because um, I'm not sure about the English names, but we will still use them. So the first one is Bulbasaur. The second Pokemon is Ivysaur. And the third Pokemon of the Bulbasaur class type is Venusaur. So these are the grass Pokemon that we will use in our small project. So let's go on to the fire Pokemon, Termainer. And we add a Charmeleon and we add a Charizard. So, and let's not forget the Aqua Pokemons. Squirtle, War Turtle, and Blastoise. So, these are now our, our data models. So we have them all in one folder and in the next step we will create them. We will write some code, but this is the first part of our, of our project that we write the architecture. And uh, first defining some architecture helps us really in improving the code.